Welcome back, everybody. You're watching Boss Lady News. Once again, comes on every single Friday at 5 p.m. And now we're going to speak with Brother Charles Clements. I want to thank you for coming on today. Well, it's my pleasure, Britt, being a part of Boss Lady News. <laughs> thank you so much. Now, I got a chance to go out and enjoy the UMAs, just being a part of it, the New England Urban Music Awards. Right. That is such a wonderful event that you put together. Yeah, year number eight. Year you number eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First three years we were at Berkeley Performance Center, and I wanted to bring it closer to home. And we did three years at the uh, Strand Theater, and then the last two years at Hibernian Hall, which is a fabulous venue. It's beautiful. Yes. I had not been in Hibernian Hall before. Mm -hmm. There's so many different things going on in there. Yeah, and, and we have such a great uh, committee, New England Urban Music Awards committee from Leandra to DJ T. Lawson, Eric Lawson, and they're not related, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Funky Fresh Radio, and uh, Jada, and the list just goes on and on. And the host herself. Miss Courtney Boston. Yes. The Courtney Boston. She's so much fun on the mic. Yes. Now, what kind of encouraged you to want to go ahead and, and give the urban music a platform? Well, first of all, the reason why we have the New England Urban Music Awards is for so long, um, we've never had a platform um, to spotlight our talented uh, artists that we have in the New England area. Um, we have to be our own advocate. Mm -hmm. And you hear President Barack Obama talk about stimulus package. But I like to say we need to be our own stimulus package. Mm -hmm. We have to inspire people. We have to inspire our young people. And also you'll see that the event is a family-oriented event. Event. So we encourage folks to go to our website at urbanmusicawards.org. Nominate yourselves. Mm -hmm. You have to be your own advocate. President Barack Obama, he votes for himself. So you should take and nominate yourself. If not, you know of artists, go there, nominate, and then the process starts there. That's, I mean, it was an incredible, incredible event. Mm -hmm. And if any of you guys want to check out who the winners of the New England Urban Music Awards um, winners were, you can go to... UrbanMusicAwards.org. <laughs> so let's get into the meat and potatoes of why you are on Boss Lady News today. Mm -hmm. We have been hearing all around town that you are interested in being the next mayor. Well, I announced it at my birthday party two years ago, mm -hmm. uh, 2011, August the 21st, where city councilors were there. Actually, all the city councilors were there, or the majority of them, plus state representative, and they made uh, August the 21st, 2011, Charles Clemens Day. Oh, wow. And um, the reason why I stepped out um, on faith uh, to make this announcement because I've always been about the community. I've always put the community before me. I've always had change and I've never been the type of person to complain and just sit back. I'm the type of person, um, as um, Robert Kennedy would say, um, there are those men and women who see things and ask the question, why? Mm -hmm. I dream of things and say, why not? And all you can do is actually go out there and create change. Yes. All right, so I'd like to know how do you see yourself creating change for us? Well, first of all, let's look at our school, um, school department, the education department. Our children are our future. Um, we have turned up, and I say we because I like to hold everybody accountable, from the parents to the teachers to the elected officials to our leaders to our activists to the clergy. We have actually turned our uh, backs on our children. Mm -hmm. We have turned our backs on our future. How, how is it possible that you only have quality schools in certain neighborhoods? If you, if you can have quality schools in certain neighborhoods, then you certainly can have quality schools in every neighborhood. Mm -hmm. The economy is bad. I have folks that look like you and I might be working two or three jobs. And it's hard for them to go to parents' um, teachers' meetings. It's hard for them to be involved with their children like they should be in, involved in their children. You have a child that has to get up two hours, three hours early to be, you know, to drive an hour away to go to school. It's so much easier to have a child walk from their home to this school, and now their parents can be involved in it. Mm -hmm. And that, that, uh, that form of schooling is METCO, correct? Well, there's METCO, but there's, again, like I said, there are quality schools, what they call tier one schools, in certain parts of our communities. Mm -hmm. um, the majority of those quality schools are not in Roxbury, Dorchester, and Mattapan. 
Um, I'm talking about equaling the play playing field. Um, we have to stop playing a game of chance with our children. Mm -hmm. There are not enough seats in the quality schools. And knowing that there's not enough seats, then we have to create seats for our children. We have to inspire our children uh, to want to go to school. They should be able to look in a book, open up the book, and see themselves in the book. Mm -hmm. You know, when they learn biology and chemistry and math, the children need to grow up and say, I am math. Yeah. I am biology. I am chemistry. I am geometry. Yeah. And any of you uh, Metanetter readers out there, you do know that M. Hotep was one of the first, or was the first, to bring mathematics and science to the Greeks. Yes. So, going forward, I actually have a Roxbury resident, my camera lady, Miss Gloria Fernandez, All that right. has a question for you. Okay. And I'm really excited about your focus on education. So, my question for you is in terms of really getting out there and making changes in Boston public schools, what kind of changes do you expect to have in terms of like the um, athletics in the arts? Will that be a focus or where will your focus start? Absolutely, that would definitely be a, one of the focuses on um, our, for our children um, when it comes to um, physical education. Uh, of course, you know that uh, the First Lady, Michelle Obama, is fighting obesity. Well, here in the city of Boston, we'll be fighting obesity. I will stand behind um, the First Lady. And physical education, uh, along with the arts, um, culture, we have to bring that back. Home cooking, um, 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 home ed is another. And, of course, um, uh, putting black um, history back into the curriculum, along with Latino um, history in the core, as part of the core curriculum, and Asian Pacific um, history as part of the core cu curriculum. We have to understand, we have to be inclusive. 87% of our children are people of color. That's black, Latino, and Asian. So we have to make sure everybody is inclusive, and it has to be a round um, education system. I, I also hear that you're very much interested in getting civics back into the school system. Oh, absolutely. Over 20 um, plus years ago, they removed black history and civics from the Boston Public School. And I, and I had to say to myself, wow, why did that happen? Is it that you didn't want us to be a part of the political picture? Um, I'll say this, um, Britt, when you take a picture of this room, and I show you the picture, probably the first person you're going to look for is you. Mm -hmm. and if you don't see you, then you're going to look for somebody that you can identify with. Mm -hmm. But if you don't see anybody that you can identify with or anything that catches your attention, you're not interested in the picture. Well, for, long, for so long, we have not been a part of the picture. You know, Boston has beautiful communities, and we have all types of people in our communities, and everybody needs to be a part of the picture. Yes. And I feel like I wholeheartedly believe that if the kids were able to see and relate better to any of the police officers that you see driving around, any of the firefighters that you see, any of the construction, I also know that you're interested in getting Boston jobs back into Boston neighborhoods. Well, I'm a former Boston police officer. Mm -hmm. I'm a former correction officer, entrepreneur. I've been self-employed since the age of 13. I just love my communities. But you talked about civics. In, in today's technology, we have BNN. Mm -hmm. um, I watch BNN. If I can't make it to a certain meeting, um, town hall forum, and I'll be educated, well, why can't we say take that same technology during the council hearings and channel that into the schools so that our children can actually be a part of um, the dialogue and have case studies of legislation that's going on in our city so that when they grow up and they want to become elected officials, they're already, they're, it won't be something new to them. Mm -hmm. So we can take and actually put into the, the Boston Public Schools, um, the public here in civics, but live, real time. Yes. I have a, I actually have an interesting question that I wanted to ask you. I do listen to Touch Radio. Mm -hmm. And Touch well, Radio. Thank you very much. <laughs> the fabric of the black community. The fabric of the black community. And black is not just a color, it's a consciousness. That's actually what I wanted to ask you about, kind of playing devil's advocate for a moment there. Mm. Now, if I was not a black American female, mm -hmm. how do you feel, do you think it would be an issue, me knowing that you represent being a part of the black community, a mm -hmm. part, you 
are the fabric of the black community. Mm -hmm. How would somebody outside of that community feel voting for you? Well, first of all, you need to understand fabric is something that comforts you and comes in different textures and it comes in a lot of different colors. Um, look at the black community. You have Greek pizza shop owners, Russian gas shop owners, Asian uh, nail owners. So the black community has always been inclusive. So to think that, you know, I would be only focused on one type of people is that, that, that doesn't even make sense because come to our community and it's, it's, it's international. Mm -hmm. However, you can go to other parts of communities and you won't see people that look like us. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's equal the playing field and let's be, uh, be one community, one Boston, as they say, Boston strong. Let's be one and not be divided. Yes, yes. I like how that was very well put. So anyone who needs to get out there, people need to be registered, first of all. But those who are registered, what do they need to do to actually vote? Well, th there's a timeline. April the 17th is when the candidates could go sign up. Of course, they have up until May 15th mm -hmm. to sign papers. So as you know, um, there's gazillions of people running for mayor now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and your brother right here, you know, I made that announcement way before Mayor Menino said he wasn't going to run for re-election. Mm -hmm. So that says a lot about me. Mm -hmm. That says a lot about my faith. Mm -hmm. uh, I have no problem speaking truth to the perceived power, and I understand that power. The real power is being is our center, our God, our Jah, our Jehovah, Allah, Most High Supreme Being. Um, so April the 30th, we get our papers to go out and ask for signatures. And I'll say this, um, that I did not know, because we weren't a part of civics, that if you, Brit, signed Candidates One's papers, um, and you sign mines and he puts his paper or she puts her papers in first, then your name gets deducted off of my paperwork. Mm. So I'm telling folks to have exclusive signatures for the candidate that you believe in. Exclusive means that you signed up for one person that's running for mayor, mm -hmm. and you also do that for a city councilor. And, and then in June, question. the second week in June, um, we will be notified who has made it to the next I call it the next round. The next round. Yes. And we've got our fingers crossed because I know there's quite a few people out there yes. that want to make sure that this is a seat that's going to you. Um, last but not least, anyone who does want to find out more about your views and about you so that they can solely put in their signature on your ballot, how can they get in touch with you? Well, I welcome uh, all communities to go to www.touch. Oh, I'm thinking about the radio <laughs> station. I can't believe that. Go to www.childsforboston.com. That's childsforboston.com. You can also email me. You can click volunteer. You can click issues. Let me know what your issues are because I want to take your issues and put them on the radar. A lot of people are scared to talk about the elephant in the room. Well, your brother is going to come there with some peanuts. I'm going <laughs> to feed the elephant. I like that. Bring some peanuts, guys. <laughs> well, thank you so much oh, for coming pleasure, out. It's my pleasure, Britt. Thank you very much. It's been my honor, and um, I just love what you do. You keep doing what you do because you inspire me. Thank you so much, and you, you and others like you inspire me. We're going to cut to a brief PSA, and we're going to hear the beautiful sounds of Laquandra Seymour. We'll be right back. Actually, she was she was on the UMAs. That's right. Check her out. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for tuning back into Boss Lady News. I had a great show. I hope you all enjoyed it as well. Make sure you get down to Copley. Pay your respects to the memorial for the disaster that happened in Copley. And then also, thank you, Nikki, for bringing me all the trends. I'll make sure I stay correct this spring. Brother Charles, thank you so much for letting us know about your mayoral candidacy. Toya, we'll get together and have some more lunch. With no further ado, I'd like to introduce you all to LaQuandra Seymour, performing the classic, If Only You Knew.